In January 1912, British explorer Robert Falcon Scott and his five-man team were pushing through the harsh conditions of Antarctica, just 80 miles away from the South Pole. They had already faced blizzards and frostbite, but the question remained, would they be the first to reach the pole, or would they be beaten to it? Scott's journey had started over a year earlier when his ship, Terra Nova, arrived in Antarctica. Despite the scientific research and sample collection they were tasked with, Scott was determined to make a run for the South Pole, vowing to secure the honor of this achievement for the British Empire. The race to the South Pole became urgent for Scott when he found out that another explorer, Roald Amundsen, was also aiming for the pole. Amundsen, a Norwegian, had already been to Antarctica and had sailed the Northwest Passage. He originally planned to go to the North Pole, but changed his mind and secretly headed to Antarctica. He set up camp closer to the pole than Scott and focused solely on reaching the pole, unlike Scott who had scientific obligations. Both expeditions waited out the Antarctic winter and then started their journey to the pole in 1911. Amundsen's team started in October, while Scott's team started a few days later in November. Amundsen and Scott used different ways to travel to the South Pole. Scott used sled dogs, ponies, and tractors, but the machines broke down and the ponies got weak. They had to pull their heavy sleds on foot. Amundsen, on the other hand, used skis and sled dogs. The dogs helped them save energy, and they even used some of the dogs for food. Amundsen's team raced to the pole at a speed of over 20 miles per day. They took a new route and faced many obstacles, but by early December, they had gone farther into Antarctica than anyone before. On December 14, 1911, they reached the South Pole, planted the Norwegian flag, and took pictures. They only stayed for a few days before heading back. Amundsen said, the goal was reached, our journey ended. On January 17, 1912, Scott and his tired British team finally made it to the South Pole, only to find the remains of Amundsen's camp. Scott was devastated, feeling like they had worked so hard to get there, only to be beaten by someone else. But things only got worse for Scott and his team. They arrived at the pole late in the Antarctic summer, and the temperatures were quickly dropping. As they started their journey back north, they were hit hard by exhaustion, frostbite, and malnourishment. Sadly, on February 17, Edgar Evans became the first of the British group to die, and a month later, Lawrence Oates, who was severely frostbitten, sacrificed himself in a blizzard to help his team. He said, I am just going outside in maybe some time, before leaving the tent and disappearing. <laughs>